Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, take a look at the headlines first. Physicist Peter Higgs, who theorized existence of Higgs boson, passes away. The United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs has recently released the Financing for Sustainable Development Report 2024. Global Trade Outlook and Statistics Report released by World Trade Organization. Parivartan Chintan, a tri-service brainstorming session was recently organized to propel jointness and integration in the Indian Armed Forces. The National Green Tribunal has recently directed the Punjab government to disclose how it plans to achieve its target of reducing stubble burning incidents. 55th United Nations Human Rights Council appoints an expert on human rights and climate change. In the very first news, physicist Peter Higgs, who theorized existence of Higgs boson, passes away. Higgs, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2013 alongside François Englert for their revolutionary insights into the mechanism influencing the origin of subatomic particle mass, first proposed the existence of the Higgs boson in 1964. This elusive particle central to our understanding of the universe's fundamental workings was eventually confirmed in 2012 at the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest particle accelerator, situated at the European Particle Physics Laboratory, European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN in Switzerland. Let us understand about Higgs boson. Higgs boson is the fundamental particle associated with Higgs field, a field that gives mass to other fundamental particles. Particles' mass depends upon their interaction with this Higgs field. A few facts to note here. Photons do not interact with this field and are thus massless, whereas particles like electrons and protons do interact and have masses. Even the Higgs boson itself interacts with this field and thus has mass. The concept of Higgs field and Higgs particle are fundamental to our current understanding of way nature works and stands as a cornerstone of our comprehension of the laws of nature. Beyond the Higgs boson, our comprehension of the universe's building blocks includes Fermions, the 12 particles that form the foundation of matter. They are building blocks of matter and are split into 6 quarks and 6 leptons. Additionally, bosons play a crucial role as carriers of energy and forces throughout the cosmos. The scientific community mourns the loss of a visionary whose contributions have reshaped our understanding of the cosmos. Peter Higgs leaves behind a legacy that will continue to inspire generations to come. In our next news, the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs has recently released the Financing for Sustainable Development Report 2024, which sheds light on the critical challenges faced by developing countries in financing their sustainable development goals. One of the key highlights of the report is the staggering financing gap faced by developing countries, which ranges between $2.5 trillion and $4 trillion annually. This divide in financing access extends beyond just long-term financing as developing countries also face significantly worse terms when it comes to contingency financing. Furthermore, the report suggests that the policy, regulatory and tax frameworks in these countries are not sufficiently aligned with the SDGs, creating a weak enabling environment for sustainable development financing. The reason behind this slow financing for SDGs are multifaceted. Rising systemic risks such as the COVID-19 pandemic and the increasing frequency of disasters have put significant stress on national financing frameworks. Additionally, the average GDP growth rates in developing countries have fallen to just over 4% annually between 2021 and 2025, while the median debt service burden for least developed countries rose to 12% in 2023. Other concerns such as digitization-induced risk and rising geopolitical tensions have further exacerbated the situation. To address these challenges, the report provides a set of recommendations. Firstly, it emphasizes the need for building tax capacity to improve tax revenue for delivering on the SDGs. Secondly, it calls for enhanced international development cooperation to mobilize other financial resources, including a new approach to blended finance focused on support for sustainable trade and responsible business conduct. The report also stresses the importance of intensified action to address the debt challenges of developing countries. Additionally, it highlights the need for enhancing the coherence between trade, investment and sustainable development as well as the importance of funding for data and statistical systems to produce actionable insights for advancing the SDGs. Overall, the Financing for Sustainable Development Report 2024 
paints a sobering picture of the financial challenges faced by developing countries in their pursuit of sustainable development. However, the report's recommendations provide a roadmap for addressing these challenges and unlocking the necessary resources to achieve the SDGs. In our next news, Global Trade Outlook and Statistics Report released by World Trade Organization. The report has unveiled concerning preliminary signs of fragmentation in global trade flows, raising alarms about the resilience of the global trade system. Let's dive into the key findings of the report. In 2023, a noticeable downturn of 6% in intermediate goods trade contrasted with stagnant trade in non-intermediates, signaling a potential disruption and fragmentation in goods. Moreover, the share of Asian trading partners in China's total parts and accessories declined slightly, dropping from 62.8% in 2019 to 60.2%, underscoring shifting dynamics in regional trade relationships. The resilience of global trade is further tested by disruptions along two vital shipping routes. The Panama Canal, responsible for handling 6% of global trade, is currently operating at partial capacity due to freshwater shortages. Meanwhile, the Swiss Canal, crucial for approximately 12% of global trade, faces challenges as attacks on vessels hinder trade along this shortest maritime route between Asia and Europe. Due to attack on vessels, there is a diversion of traffic around the Cape of Good Hope, which has added approximately 10 days to Asia-Europe journeys, exacerbating delays and logistical challenges. In the realm of services, concerns arise over potential disruptions to data flows and evidence of French shoring practices in ICT services. U.S. imports from Asia, predominantly India, have decreased from 45.1% to 32.6%, while imports from North America have surged. French shoring is a trade strategy focusing on political and economic allies, is reshaping global trade dynamics, raising questions about the future trade relationships. Additionally, initiatives taken to boost global supply chain and trade include Supply Chain Resilience Initiative, launched by India, Japan and Australia, India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor for connecting India to the Gulf and Gulf to Europe, and Indo Pacific Economic Framework for Prosperity to strengthen economic engagement among partner countries. As global trade faces mounting pressures and challenges, these initiatives represent critical steps towards ensuring the stability and resilience of the international trade system. In another news, Parivartan Chintan, a tri-service brainstorming session was recently organized to propel jointness and integration in the Indian Armed Forces. Now let's dive deeper into the concept of jointness and integration. Jointness of defense forces implies the synergized use of resources from the three services, Army, Navy and Air Force, while respecting the uniqueness of each to achieve optimal results and avoid duplication. This concept of jointness can further lead to the integration of defence forces which involves the formal combining of constituent elements into a single structure. For example, theatrization seeks to integrate the capabilities of the three services. Now let's understand the importance and need of jointness and integration. It can improve the culture of cooperation among the defence forces and promote integrated war-fighting capacities. Furthermore, it can help modernize the forces and make them future ready by streamlining defense budget spending and addressing funding shortages. Ultimately, this integration can facilitate India's rise as a regional power and one of the global powers. However, the path to integration is not without its challenges. The lack of a joint services doctrine and absence of a coherent national security strategy as well as the institutional inertia of different wings has hindered the progress. To address these challenges, the government has taken several initiatives. The appointment of Chief of Defence Staff, who is mandated to bring about jointness in the operation, logistics, transport and training of the three armed services, is a significant step. Additionally, the creation of two joint commands, the Andaman and Nicobar Command, and the Strategic Forces Command, which looks after nuclear assets, and the establishment of Headquarters Integrated Defence Staff to provide a single point, tri-service military advice to the government are all positive steps towards greater integration. These efforts demonstrate the government's commitment to strengthening the defence forces and enhancing their capabilities through the integration of resources and the promotion of joint mentorship. Moving on to the next news. The National Green Tribunal has recently directed the Punjab government to disclose how it plans to achieve its target of reducing stubble burning incidents. Let's delve deeper into understanding the role and functioning of the specialised body. 
The National Green Tribunal or NGT was established as a statutory body under the NGT Act of 2010. It is headed by a chairperson and comprises of 10 to 20 judicial as well as expert members. A person who is or has been a Supreme Court judge or a High Court Chief Justice can serve as both chairperson and judicial member. A person who is or has been a High Court judge can only serve as judicial member. If we talk about NGT's mandate, then it is to serve as a specialized judicial body equipped with expertise to adjudicate environmental cases in the country. If we talk about how it adjudicates matters relating to the seven legislations only, then it includes Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1974 Water Prevention and Control of Pollution Cess Act 1977 Forest Conservation Act 1980 Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 Environment Protection Act 1986, the Public Liability Insurance Act 1991, and the Biological Diversity Act 2002. It also works with the disposal of the applications or appeals within six months of filing of the same. It is guided by the principles of natural justice and is not bound by the Code of Civil Procedure 1908. When passing orders or decisions, the NGT applies the principles of sustainable development, the precautionary principle, and the polluter pays principle. The NGT has the power of a civil court and can take suo motu cognizance of environmental issues. It can also grant relief in the form of compensation and damages to the affected persons. While its orders are binding but they are not final, as an appeal can be made to the Supreme Court within 90 days. It also has a presence in five zones across the country, with the principal bench headquartered in Delhi. This directive from the NGT to the Punjab government on stubble burning incidents underscores the tribunal's role in addressing critical environmental challenges and holding authorities accountable for their actions or inactions. The response from the Punjab government will be crucial in determining the progress made in tackling the pressing environmental issue. In the last news for the day, 55th United Nations Human Rights Council appoints an expert in human rights and climate change. In 2021, the United Nations Human Rights Council made a significant stride in the realm of climate change by passing a resolution acknowledging the intersection between human rights and climate change. This resolution recognized the rights of people in vulnerable situations bear a disproportionate burden from the negative effects of climate change. The urgent need to integrate human rights considerations into climate change policies stems from the profound impact of climate change on various human rights, including the right to life and the right to food. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, marginalized communities are particularly vulnerable to climate change. Further integration will help to improvise mitigation and adaptation strategies. Let us understand the ways by which human rights can be integrated into climate change. First and foremost, Promotion of alternative energy sources, conservation of forests. Another is ensuring the meaningful participation of affected communities in the design and implementation of climate change projects. And lastly, access to due process and to remedy if their rights are violated. Further, various initiatives which have been undertaken to address this integration are Paris Agreement 2015, where states pledged to respect human rights in all climate actions. Another is a Geneva Pledge on Human Rights and Climate Action 2015 for sharing of best practice and knowledge between human rights and climate experts. At a national level, countries have taken measures like National Action Plan on Climate Change, Environment Protection Act 1986 and more. The Supreme Court too recognized right to be free from adverse effects of climate change. The analogy is also supported through some global human rights principles in context of climate change, like the principle of intergenerational equity and to ensure accountability and effective remedy for human rights harms caused by the climate change. With these concerted efforts, the global community strives to ensure that climate action is not only effective but also respects and protects the right of all individuals. The place in news for today is Republic of Ireland with its capital, Dublin. It is in the news recently as Ireland has got its new Prime Minister. If we talk about its political features, it occupies a greater part of an island lying to west of Great Britain. Its bordering countries are Northern Ireland to north, which is also a part of the United Kingdom. It is surrounded by water bodies with Atlantic Ocean to its west, Celtic Sea to the south and Irish Sea to the east. Moreover, Ireland is separated from Great Britain by the North Channel, Irish Sea, and St. George's Channel. 
If you take a look at its geographical features, its highest peak is the Karen Two Hill, its longest river is the River Shannon, and its largest lake is Loch Neagh. As we conclude today's main news, let's take a look at some quick updates. Supreme Court quashes arbitral award against Delhi Metro Rail Corporation. Curative petition is the last constitutional remedy available to a person whose review petition Article 137 has been dismissed by Supreme Court. Given shape in Rupa Ashok Hura vs Ashok Hura and others, the curative power of the court flows from Article 142, power to do complete justice. The Election Commission said that anonymous political posters and hoardings are not allowed. Section 127A of Representation of the People Act 1951 unequivocally prohibits the printing or publishing of election pamphlets, posters, placards or banners. India's Jagjit Pavaria has been re-elected to International Narcotics Control Board for the term 2025-2030. INCB is independent and quasi-judicial monitoring body for implementation of UN International Drug Control Conventions. It was established in 1968 in accordance with Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs 1961. Released by WHO, Global Hepatitis Report 2024 revealed that India accounted for 11.6% of the global burden and ranked second after China for Hepatitis B and C cases. Hepatitis is an inflammation of the liver caused by a variety of infectious viruses and non-infectious agents like alcohol, autoimmune and drugs. Supreme Court is hearing a case of misleading claims in advertisements by an Ayurveda-related company. Misleading claims are prohibited under the Drugs and Magic Remedies Objectionable Advertisements Act of 1954. USA recalls various hand sanitizers containing methanol. FDA has warned that methanol exposure could lead to nausea, coma, seizures, permanent blindness, permanent damage to the central nervous system or death. ICAR has developed the following three microbial formulations. Bactolime integrates. It contains PGPRs, plant growth promoting rhizobacteria with liming material. Back to gypsum, which ameliorates high pH soils and ensures simultaneous delivery of plant beneficial bacteria. And trichogypsum, which ameliorates high pH soils and ensures delivery of trichoderma, a fungal biocontrol agent. Command Hospital Pune became the first government hospital in India to conduct successful piezoelectric bone conduction hearing implants PCI. Piezoelectric PCI system is an implantable medical electronic device for hearing impaired patients. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.